we are in the fourth week of the Lent season. Guess, 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 guess. How many days are left in the Lent season before Holy Week? Okay, I'm getting a number. <laughs> it's a number between 500 days and one day. Guess how many? Just yell out. Okay, good, good, excellent. Wow, I'm glad I asked. Help me clear this up, because remember, we're trying to figure out how many days are left in Lent before we hit Holy Week. And I was thinking of a number between 500 days and one. I heard many of you say 11. There's 11 days left before Holy Week. 11 days left. And our theme today, from the readings is that as disciples of Christ, baptized disciples of Christ, that's you and I, we are burning shine and shining lamps of faith in the world. So I'm looking out there and you're, you, you are nice and bright over here because you're burning shining lamps of faith. That's good to know. So let's take a look at the readings. They teach us about this. So in the first reading, the readers, you did very well, by the way, uh, uh, the book of Exodus, chapter 32. We know the story of Moses. I love saying that name. Moses. Remember, God sent Moses to Egypt to say, you're going to be the deliverer. You're going to deliver the people of Israel who have been in slavery for, oh, there's another number here, 400 years. Whew. That's a long time. So, Moses works with God. God works through Moses. And he does deliver. And Moses now, we understand, was a shining, burning lamp that God worked through him. Remember, every time God uh, and Moses, Moses encountered God pretty much like face to face. When Moses would come down to the mountain, his face was shining physically shining. The people were scared. A lot of times he had to wear a veil over his uh, head until that, that glow of God didn't have, have it anymore. But he was a burning, shining lamp of God to the people of Israel. It was Moses, we heard this morning, who intercede, interceded on behalf of God to spare the people of Israel from sure destruction that God was planning for them. Why? Because they turned their back. They preferred darkness to light. And even though they saw Moses in his shining, that he was shining, physically shining, they still turned their back. But thank God for Moses. It's good to intercede. We can do that too. We can pray for others. And we will here in a few moments in our prayers of intercession. Moses is a burning and shining lamp. And then in uh, St. John's Gospel, chapter 5, Jesus is talking about, he talked about Moses and another person, St. John the Baptist. He also was a, a burning, shining lamp of his time. It was St. John the Baptist who gave testimony to Jesus. Remember what he said when he saw Jesus? He pointed out, there, there is the Lamb of God who will take away the sins of the world. Follow him. So Moses and St. John the Baptist, they still, their words still shine bright. It's burning words. They shine bright for us so that, that, those, that they can help us follow. Follow Jesus that will lead to eternal salvation, leads us to heaven. You and I are called to be burning and shining lamps of faith in the world. We will give witness to the world in our own way. I don't know what that will look like today, but we're going to give witness in the world of our love for Jesus, who is our Savior. So we are going to burn 
and shine bright. This Eucharist helps us to do that. So let us end our reflection from Lewis Case. He writes this. People may doubt what we say, but they will believe what we do. People may doubt what we say, but they will believe what we do. What are we going to do? We ask God this morning to help us keep burning and shining bright as people of faith in the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And together we stand, united as the body of Christ, shining bright, we turn to our merciful Father with our prayers and petitions this morning. for the leaders of the nations and for all authorities that they govern wisely and justly, we pray to the Lord. For the conversion of our hearts and minds during this Lenten season that we strive to imitate our Lord in the Blessed Virgin Mary, we pray to the Lord. As we continue our Lenten journey to Easter, let us not go weary of begging the Lord for all our needs. We pray to the Lord. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and the unemployed, for those suffering from depression or addiction, and for all those in any kind of danger, we pray to the Lord. For those who will receive the sacrament of baptism this Easter and all who are baptized into Christ may continue to be invited by the Savior of mankind. We pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, especially for the poor, for the poor holy souls in purgatory, for wounded death is offered. We pray to the Lord. for our own needs and intentions that we now recall in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Loving Father, look with favor on your children here this morning and hear the prayers we offer through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Maybe we found out the screen's petition.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that what we offer in sacrifice may cleanse us in our frailty from every evil and always, always grant us your loving protection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your loving kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. You're indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. We remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. We remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to, to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together we stand, and at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Well, thank you very much. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord. Our community song is, can be found on the screen, Build My Life.
Let us pray. May this beautiful sacrament we have just received purify us, we pray, O Lord, and grant your servants freedom from all blame, that those bound by a guilty conscience may glory in the fullness of heaven remedy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Amen. Thank you. Our closing song can be found on the screen. Blessed be the Lord. Mm -hmm.